The United Nations have recently shared that by 2050, Africa's urban population will triple. More than half of Africans will be living in cities. In fact, we have that today in our own um, province. Roughly 54% of people living in the cities. Growth in urban areas is clearly a positive indication. It means that the middle class is growing. It means that people are having thriving lifestyles. But it comes with a number of challenges. It's accompanied by situations such as gridlock, pollution, poor road conditions, situations where we have insufficient or inefficient public transportation options. And uh, private and public sector alike have realized that these challenges can significantly hamper the growth that is taking place. The good news is that we have made significant strides um, in the urban transportation uh, solutions and there are many more underway and with the advances that we've had in technology it's become possible to not only reimagine but completely reinvent mo mobility solutions. We do have a 25-year integrated transport master plan. This has been approved by the, by the provincial government and it's supported by all the municipalities in our province. And the vision of the, of the ITMP25 is to establish an integrated and efficient transport system in our province that promotes economic development and prosperity, fosters quality of life, socially includes all communities and preserves the environment. So there's a whole number of sub points there, but I think the key thing is not to look at transport or roads in a narrow sense, in an isolated way, or public transport in a, in a compartmental, in compartmentalized way, but to look at an integrated system that's located within a social environment that promotes and enables economic development and that is also environmentally sustainable. That's really what we're trying to develop in the medium term. And the question that we have to pose today is how can we use intelligent transport systems or solutions and technological innovation to support this vision and to promote and to improve our public transport system in the province. We cannot keep on adding more infrastructure in order to manage the, the congestion that we have. We have to find better and smarter ways of doing that. Uh, and the aim with all of this is to make transport operations more efficient. We have a, a, a terrible record in road safety, second only to Nigeria and Africa. Um, our statistics are very poor. In the Gauteng province alone, the economic cost of accidents on an annual basis is approximately 57 billion rand per annum. The clever people tell me, the economists, that if you manage to reduce the accidents by half, you could add one and a half percent approximately to the GDP on an annualized basis. Mobility is key to media urbanization. I mean, the numbers I've given you tells you that we cannot do much to change the economic challenges that we have without changing. Um, the modal shift can only occur when the mobility uh, barriers are removed through making public transport attractive. And IFM is one way of making public transport at attractive. The barriers of mobility can only be removed by providing the commuter with the ability to make the choice. Africa has an opportunity to leapfrog the developed countries um, overall. Uh, the graph that Dr. Foster showed you shows you that Johannesburg is lower down, but that is not, that lower down numbers are not the cities that are, are struggling. Those are the cities that still have an opportunity, an opportunity to change and bring new changes. And this is what we're looking at. And public transport has to grow efficiently and in a sustainable manner. Now, if you're going to move people the right way, you better know where they are moving from. How do we look at enabling safe cities? Um, we look at it in three phases. Which are the phases that are already in place today? We're looking at before the accident, avoiding any incident that may happen. Then we look at during the incident and after the incident. From the ICT's perspective, in order to be able to avoid 
we're looking at omni protection, smart sensing. Then we're looking at decision making during the incident. It is critical to save lives when there is an incident or accident. A key area is the commercialization of the taxi industry. At the moment, it is a cash based industry. You go and pay your cash uh, taxi fare, it gets collected there. If the driver, if you don't have the exact amount, the driver gets very angry, he's rude to his passengers sometime, and then he gives you a joy ride that really scares the hell out of you. So, can we begin to use a new way, new technology to manage the taxi industry? And I think there's some useful innovations that are starting to emerge. Uh, at least one of the associations has now got uh, free Wi Fi at, an, at uh, taxi ranks. Uh, in Gauteng, they're starting to roll that out. And that's a great benefit to, to the commuters. And like that, there's a, there's a pilot study that's been done now of a new, a new taxi ticket. Market share. So we look at market share, 69% of public transport is done on minibus taxis. So first of all, if we're talking integration, if we're talking, you know, doing stuff or systems, we're like, okay, 69% market share, that is something worth doing. 14 million people a day almost 10 billion trips per annum are done by minibus taxis. Ubiquitous availability. There are places where there are no trains, where there are no buses, but you'll find taxis. The taxi industry can change. It's a very good business. And I think part of the challenge is that we need to be working, you know, with each other, not so much in, in contradiction, let me say that. And it's important that we understand where each player comes from, where each business comes from. And maybe just to also highlight some of the things where this is one of the few modes of public transport that is not subsidized. So, you know, and yet is able to have 69% market share. So there is something there. I think, you know, a lot of the times we go to to other places and look at the interventions. So we're saying After Robot is something that we are working with an association to say, how do we improve your efficiency as a business? How do we make your operations more efficient as a business? We had a lot of problems with the learner's license testing environment. We now have introduced uh, the, the, the computer, uh, computerized examinations uh, system. Uh, it has 1,200 questions. 64 questions are generated at random. No person can predict what the questions would be. Uh, if you picked up um, any newspaper in Gauteng, say 24 months ago, a day wouldn't pass with some article about potholes in Johannesburg. Uh, JRA has done some, some, some very creative work here. They've created a, a cell phone application. It's called Find and Fix. Uh, it was developed last year. It empowers ordinary citizens to identify any defect on any portion of the municipal road network. The Passenger Rail Agency of South Africa, PASA, we've had some very negative reporting in the recent times. But it has really undermined some of the excellent work that, that PASA is doing. We've just launched last month the Gauteng Nerve Center. This is a completely new building that has been developed uh, just close to Tembisa, 180 million rand development. A completely new high-tech uh, um, control center, which will monitor at least over the next few years every station in Gauteng, Prasa station in Gauteng, linked to the fiber optic cabling system and signaling system. And of course, this is in preparation for the new trains that are coming in. So once the system is fully operational, and that will be in the first quarter of next year, we will have full sight of every station uh, from the center, uh, an emergency room, passenger information, visuals of stations themselves so that you can actually communicate information to passengers, etc. There's more to Senral than just the, the controversy around e-tolls. And I think if we want a success story of travel demand, demand management on our freeway network, at least that network, that portion of the network that Senral controls, we must go and see, I think if people have the time, the Senral Command Center in, in Midrand. It is a really sophisticated system. We now looking at how do we have 
a collaborative system. I mean, today, if you talk about ICT, you're talking about convergence and convergence and convergence. What is it this convergence talk about? It's convergence of the video, it's convergence of the data, and it's convergence of, even when you look at video conferencing, it's convergence of those two. And to make me matters easier, identification of whatever the incident has happened, geographic information system is needed. And geographic information system can only be applied when you have broadband. A factor that we should consider what caused this improvement in road safety in Gauteng is um, the JMPD launching their e-enforcement program. They call it the electronic enforcement program where they took a zero tolerance approach on their road network. Uh, it's a big, very big road network, over 10,000 kilometers uh, to cover. But in 2006-07 they initiated the program and there was a steady decline in the accident rate. Um, Gauteng also introduced the autopilot project and no real effect in terms of that pilot project but it was more the on-ground enforcement that was contributing to this. It actually makes Gauteng from a road safety perspective the safest province in the country. One of the critical points Madam Chair is the very last bullet there in order to achieve all of this that we desire, we need to have a supporting ICT and ITS industry. And I think we're very happy that all, both of these industries in South Africa are incredibly strong and we do have the support to make sure that we can implement.